Hi, it's DeWire. It's Wednesday, January the 9th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me also add to, I'm a Yankee fan. I know a lot of my friends are horrified seeing me wear this jersey. Understand, I'm just paying tribute here to Mookie Betts. If you don't know who he is, look him up. Great player. All right, let's talk about Gervonta Davis versus Abner Maris. Now, I believe it's just one of the facts of life, whether it's boxing or whether it's out on the street, right? You can't stay in the pocket with a puncher. I like Gervonta Davis big over Abner Maris. I don't believe this fight is competitive. Understand, Davis is a blessed puncher. He's a southpaw. His left hand, right, when he throws hooks, when he throws uppercuts, it's a plus. In other words, he has one of the biggest punches in boxing. No one, let me repeat that, no one has gone the distance with Davis since 2014. Because he's also a shorter guy, he's 5'5", Davis can get low. So when he throws the uppercut, he's really low when he lets that uppercut go, right? It's one of the best uppercuts in boxing other than Chris Eubank, other than Canelo. I really can't name a guy who drops a shoulder and throws a better uppercut than he does. So let me say, Davis, who's aggressive, likes to cut off the ring on opponents. In other words, he's not passive early in fights. There are other big punchers. Deontay Wilder comes to mind, who is waiting for the perfect opportunity, right? He wants the door to be wide open before he walks through it. Not Davis, right? Davis is coming after you. Davis is firmly convinced that if a shootout happens, his bullets are bigger than yours. He's going to hit harder than you, right? It's a puncher's mentality. They're going for the shootout. Davis doesn't worry too much about defense, about hiding his legs, where he's going, and stuff like that. You know if you fight Gervonta Davis sooner or later, he's going to be coming forward sooner, more so than later. He's going to be coming forward and he's going to be trying to throw that left hand, right? Davis, to me, doesn't have a lot of what I call ring coverage. But understand his aggression throws fighters off, right? I believe some of the guys he fought, Jose Pedraza comes to mind, weren't expecting a young guy to come in there and just try to collapse the pocket. Just be throwing big punches without fear of being countered. That's who Davis is. He's, his nickname's Tank. To me, he's a bull. To beat Davis, you have to be a matador. You have to give the illusion that you're in the pocket. You have to make him come to you. Then you have to bait and switch. Right? Look like you're here. Lateral movement. Jump off at the side. Right? Have him run through you. Have him swing and miss. Understand, Davis, when he throws hooks, they're compact. Right? He's not a big wind-up guy. You're not going to have him missing like guys who wind up to throw straight punches. Right? Davis wants to get close enough to you to land the hook. So, a defensive master who understands that defense starts with positioning, where the guys are in the ring, 
someone who is distance conscious, who understands. He doesn't want Davis close enough to him to be able to throw hooks, right? Someone who gets the idea of not engaging Davis, having him run through the pocket, right? Someone who's not going to try to faint to counter Davis while staying close to the pocket like Liam Walsh did. Rather, someone who has a stick, is operating behind a jab, right, is outside turning Davis, who has ring coverage, who can drop a straight right hand on a southpaw, then get out of dodge, not stick around for an exchange. That person would have a chance. So to sum up, fighting Davis, he's a bull, you need to be a matador, you can't stay in his way. Abner Maris is going to make the mistake, in my opinion, of staying in Davis's way. Right? Understand, you look at Abner Maris fights, folks, it's blood and guts. Abner Maris is more of a fighter than a boxer. Even when an opponent is high volume, Abner Maris wants to exchange shots with that guy. Think Leo Santa Cruz, who he fought twice. Right? Abner Maris is in the ring ready to raise room temperature. He's the guy who has a lot of fight in him. He's not a guy who gets hit, who then thinks to himself, you know what, I have to get back to my game plan. What am I doing trading shots with this guy? Let me get back to my game plan. Let me move. Let me wait for my opportunity. Let me get this guy turning and then hit him with shots. That's not Abner Maris. Abner Maris gets hit. He wants to hit you back. Right? Abner Maris is the guy who you can lure into a shootout. Right? Mike Tyson used to have a phrase. He said, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Well, that's Abner Maris. You hit Abner Maris in the mouth, he then wants to hit you back. This isn't the guy thinking about his training camp, what his corner's telling him. Right? He's not thinking about the idea that there's a flip side to the fact that no one's gone the distance with Davis since 2014. Right? Some technicians would then say, well, how do I know Davis is going to have the stamina in the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds? Right? How do I know that this slugger who's accustomed to people falling down isn't going to panic? when he realizes that the outcome of this fight's in the hands of the judges, unless he takes me out in these last four rounds. Right? Some technicians are hanging around to hang around. They're hoping you tire yourself out. They're hoping the judges start to say to themselves in the middle of the fight, wow, this guy's actually still upright against Gervonta Davis. That's not Abner Maris. Look at both fights against Leo Santa Cruz. Right? Go back. Look at his fights against Joseph Agbeko. Right? Let me say this too. The first fight against Agbeko. He's coming inside. He's hitting Agbeko in the body. Right? Folks, you don't want to take that chance against Gervonta Davis. Right? You just don't. Because understand, Davis can get low if you're close enough to Davis to be trying to work over his body. You're close enough to get hit by Davis. Let me say this too. Abner Maris, warrior, no question about it. But you look more closely at him and you realize he's the perfect opponent for Davis. Right? Abner Maris has been fighting at 126. 
not Davis's division, right? This fight's at 130. Right? Abner Maris is gaining weight for this fight. Now think about it. If Davis is a big puncher at 130, I think it's safe to say that Abner Maris has never faced a puncher of this magnitude before in his career. Right? He's been facing guys who can hit at 126 and lower. He hasn't been facing guys who hit at 130. Let me go one step further. Leo Santa Cruz is a volume fighter. He throws a lot of punches. If someone says to you, CompuBox numbers, Leo Santa Cruz, you know when you look at those CompuBox numbers, you're going to see a lot of punches for every round. Right? Leo Santa Cruz is the definition of high volume. While Leo Santa Cruz is high volume and he's trying to finish you with a bevy of punches, right? You know, it's like a machine gun. You're by the eighth punch, then you're wobbly. By the twelfth punch, you're on the canvas. Now that's different from Gervonta Davis. He only has to land once. He hits you the right way even if you have courage. You're getting off the canvas and you're staggering around the ring. Folks, the fight really is over at that point. Right? A guy who cares about his career, who understands he's in against a puncher, if he gets hit flush and he's on the canvas and he knows that he doesn't have his balance, that fighter should stay down, fight for another day. You get off the canvas, if there's still time left in the round, right, the other guy could really hurt you. In my favorites folder right now, I have a film clip of Derek Edwards' first round KO of Badu Jack. That fight could have ended Badu Jack's career. He's hit hard. You can tell when a guy is badly hurt because his limbs stiffen. Badu Jack can't even walk in a straight line. The ref allows the fight to continue because it's the first round. I don't think the ref understood how badly hurt Badu Jack is. Badu Jack then proceeds to hit the canvas face first the next knockdown. Right? I'm just telling you that Gervonta Davis hits, comparatively speaking, 430 pounds like Derek Edwards hits. Now let me say this, Maris, people think of Maris, they remember some great fights from many years ago. Let's look at the secret to Maris, right? You look at the Andres Gutierrez fight that ends on cuts after 10 rounds. Cuts. Not a guy hit and dropped. Not a guy whose corner has had enough and throws in the towel. No, the fight ends on cuts. Other than that fight, Abner Maris has not KO'd a guy since 2014. So you're talking about a guy who didn't have knockouts at 126, who's now going up against a guy with a greater than 90% knockout ratio at 130. Folks, I just don't see this happening. Let's also talk about Abner Maris's chin and where he gets hit, right? You're fighting Gervonta Davis. You need to protect your head, right? You can't get hit in the head. This is a knockout puncher who does it primarily on head shots. Brutal body puncher too. But he KOs guys primarily on head shots. Abner Maris was KO'd on Headshots in the first round 
years ago by Johnny Gonzalez. Read the cuts too. Abner Maris has a head wound, is bleeding from the head against Vic Darchinian. Right? Abner Maris also has had eye surgery. In other words, Abner Maris is not a defensive wizard where you can't find his head. No, this is the opposite. This is the warrior who's in the trenches. He's in the pocket. He's in exactly the place you don't want to be against Gervonta Davis. Add it all up, and I see Davis winning this fight like Davis has won all of his fights in 2015, 16, 17, and 18. I'm expecting Davis to win this fight by stoppage right let me say this too i know some pundits are saying hey this fight's in southern california hey abner maris is popular in southern california i'm just telling you big time punchers who don't rely on the judges don't care where the fight is right they're fully convinced that they could take it out of the hands of the judges Let's talk about the crowd. You know, Gervonta Davis hopped on a plane and flew across the Atlantic and fought Liam Walsh in Walsh's backyard. Folks, he didn't have many people in the crowd rooting for him that night. Right? You know the mindset. This guy is tough. Don't be fooled by the baby face. This guy's been fighting for years. Right? For years. The last guy to go the distance with him went the distance in 2014 was a guy with more than 70 fights. <laughs> 70 fights. Davis has been fighting tough guys, experienced guys, for years. Right, so mentally, Davis is not going to show up and say, oh my God, I'm fighting Abner Maris in Southern California. He's not going to freeze up. He's a puncher. He's going to think to himself, okay, great, if I hit this guy flush a couple of times, maybe I can hit the club after the fight. Maybe I can make it to Sunset Boulevard and see what's out there in L.A. Right? That's the mindset. So I like Davis here. The bet I like here is Davis simply to win. But I am going to throw some. It's not a hedge because you lose it all if Maris wins. It's not a hedge. What I'm suggesting is an enhancer. Davis to win with some on Davis by stoppage. Right? I know Abner Maris is a warrior who held his own against Leo Santa Cruz. He's not fighting Leo Santa Cruz here. Right? Gervonta Davis isn't hoping to land 100 shots over 12 rounds. No, no, no. Davis just wants to land two good shots. Two good shots. And then call it a successful title defense. I like Davis here. I think Abner Maris at 33. After a career where he took on other warriors, where he hung around the pocket, took a lot of punches, landed a lot of punches. I just think this is the vet who doesn't quite get the cost of this payday. I like the young lion here. I'm expecting Gervonta Davis to win this fight by stoppage. I'm going to be a little conservative in my betting and put some of the money on Davis simply to win the fight, enhanced with the prop on Davis by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.